okay dear students uh, today we are going to start a very important standard the name of this this standard is ias 19 employee benefit okay as the name says employee benefit employee benefit okay so in this ias we will we will study that how to account for the benefits given to employee by company by employer right how employer accounts for how employer accounts for the benefits given to employee so first of all ias 19 has divided benefits into four categories four categories the first category is short term benefits short term benefits are those benefits which are given to employees within 12 months of the consumption of services within 12 months like for example, employees working now and for this work, if I am paying, if I am providing those benefits within 12 months, then that that benefit will be considered as short term benefits. So in short term benefits, you can say salary, you can write bonus, other benefits, lunch and all these, all these short term benefits which are given, which are given within 12 months of the rendering of services. Right. OK. Now. Second is long-term benefits. Long-term benefits by definition is they are given after 12 months from the date of consumption of services. Like for example, if employee is giving me services now and I am paying in I am paying benefit in return of this service after 12 months. After 12 months, then this is this should be considered as long-term benefits. I can give you one example there i i think you have heard about long service award now long service award long service award like is it's like if you have if you have spent 20 years in any organization or 25 years then they give you a special award like i think there is a policy in google that if you join google at early age and if you and if you remain in the google at the age of 50 then they give you some different special type of benefit, right? One off benefit. So that is considered as long term benefit. Now the third is third and the most important, the whole topic, the whole IS-19, major IS-19 revolves around this point number three, post employment benefits, post employment benefit. What is post employment benefit? Post employment benefit means they are given after once your employment period has ended after your retirement. So the best example for this is pension is pension. OK, right now, the last one is termination benefit. Termination benefit is the benefit which is given to employee at the time of termination at the time he's leaving. So normally the famous name who you might have heard is golden handshake, right? Sometimes we offer employees that if you leave early, if you leave early, you will get this much one off payment, right? You will get this much one off payment. So basically this, this is what termination benefit is. Okay. So there are four categories. Now we are starting from post employment benefit, which is the real heart of this IS-19. Okay. And whole class today's whole class will be given for this, even the next class also. Now, first of all, Standard has divided the pension plan, the pension plan into two categories. The first one is defined contribution plan and the second one is defined benefit plan. Defined contribution plan and the second one is defined benefit plan. Now, what is the difference between defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan? Before we move on, listen to me very carefully. First, keep this thing in mind that we are in the employer books. We are doing accounting for employer, the limited company. Okay. So what is defined contribution plan? Giving you one example. Listen, listen the story and then you can easily understand it. Listen, let us say I am an employer. Today, one employee come to me for interview. Okay. So I did interview. I just uh, decided his salary and all. Finally, he asked me about the pension. He asked me, sir, what about the pension? So I said, okay, my dear employee, I'm going to set up a pension account for you. I'm going to set up a pension account for, for you. And every month or every quarter, I will 
put like 100 pounds or 200 pounds or 100 dollars or 200 dollar in your pension account and yes it will grow with respect to time but my responsibility is just limited to just insert the funds in this account now it's your luck it's your luck that this account may convert into millions or billions of dollars or it may stuck to few thousands of dollars that's your luck that's your risk my my duty is just to put funds my duty is just to put funds that's it right so the major difference keep this thing in mind that in defined contribution see the name is defined contribution only contributions are defined only contributions are defined in defined contribution plan the risk is of employee the major risk is of employee right so now just use your brain when the major risk is of employee that means in short words in simple words employer is risk free employer is risk free and when employer is risk free so that's why very simplified accounting in the books of employer employer has no major responsibility so what what is the treatment the treatment is very simple whatever contributions whatever contributions employer is doing in the employee account employer will simply book expense so employer will make the entry debit pnl debit pnl credit cash debit pnl credit cash that's it every year whenever employer will pay employer will make this simple entry debit pnl and credit cash that's it okay expense debit and cash credit now one more thing if contributions are paid unpaid then accrue it yes there is a possibility you have heard about accrued expenses what are accrued expenses that means for the whole year you have utilized the service but you haven't paid you haven't paid so you know expenses are expenses which have been utilized but not yet paid expenses which have been utilized but not yet paid are called accrued so in that case again we'll book the expense again we'll book the expense but yes we have not paid it so we'll credit the liability accrued liability we'll credit the accrued liability we will credit the accrued liability we will credit the accrued liability right now one more thing may come if employer has paid in advance then prepayment yes there is a possibility if employer pays like for three years for three years contribution in advance then don't book the complete three year amount as a as an expense immediately no just just treat the advance amount as a prepayment okay and transfer that prepayment in pnl every year accordingly right so this is the basic introduction of defined contribution plan defined contribution plan take your time and relax and look at it The second is defined benefit plan, defined benefit plan. What is, this is the real, this is the technical area. It will consume many hours, many hours I'm telling you. Defined benefit plan. Now, before we move on, just again, I'm going to tell you the story. Once again, I hired an employee. I had an interview. So I discussed the salary. Then in the end, employee asked me, about the pension now this employee is very senior chartered accountant on very high post employee with attitude right so in the end employee asked me about the pension sir what about the pension so i said oh uh, i said in the same style that i will contribute i will contribute in your i will set up a pension account and i'll contribute x amount every month and that's only my responsibility i said this to my employee he said no 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 that's not only your responsibility, you are responsible for more things. You are responsible for more things. I said, what? I said, what? He said, listen, give me guarantee. Now, employees saying, it. give me guarantee of benefits. Give me guarantee of benefits that when I will be retiring at the age of 55 or 60, then I'll be getting this much amount of benefit, a car, or this thing, or this, this much amount. 
So now this employee is very genius and he made me sign. He made me sign all these things that as an employer, it's my responsibility to stay till the end and to take the responsibility of X amount of pension benefit to that employee. So now in this case, there is a big risk. In this case, there is a big risk of employer. Now employer is responsible. Employer has signed the agreement. Employer has signed the agreement. Okay. So now in this case, the accounting will be quite different. Totally different accounting. Totally different accounting because employer has a big risk. Employer is facing a big risk. So this risk should be reflected in the employer's books. And that's, that's what we are going to do now. Okay, so now let's read it. Read these lines. First line, the major difference, see, in defined benefit plan, it's the risk of employer. It's a risk of employer. Employer promised employee that I will provide you this much benefits at the time of retirement. See, now employer is, is, is responsible for the end benefits. Example, employer, see, this is example. Employer promised to employee that you will get 50% of final salary as a pension. 50% of final salary as a pension. Now wait, let us say employee joined the company at the age of 30. Employee joined the company at the age of 30, at the age of 30, right? And, uh, and the retirement age is, let us say, 55. Just take an example. So at the right now, he's 30. So I promised him that you will get a pension equal to 50% of your final salary. Final salary means the 55th year salary. So just think it's a big promise. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what will be his salary at the age of 55. So it's a big risk. Maybe, maybe he grew, he, he may grow exponentially. He, he, he will have a salary of millions of dollars. There will there may be extreme inflation at that time. There may be high wage rates at that time. So by giving this, by giving this confirmation as an employer, it's a very big risk on me. So when I'm taking risk on my shoulders, I need to reflect in my books. I need to reflect in my books. It's very common sense thing. Now, this is the risk of employer employer has to pay it at any cost now i says when employer risk is high so report it in the financial statement when employer risk is high so report it in financial statement okay so now what we'll be doing listen 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 we'll be doing two things we'll be doing two things listen we have obligations on us we have ob simple terms we have obligation so First of all, we'll maintain a detailed obligation account. I'm going to teach you this account first. First of all, we're going to maintain obligation account. Okay. And we call it DBO. DBO, the full form is defined benefit obligation. The second thing which we have to maintain is the plan asset account. What is this? Obviously, very simple terms. When employer has faced such a big responsibility, when employer has taken such a big responsibility, when employer has taken such a big responsibility, then definitely employer has to do preparation for it. And that preparation is plan asset. Like employer will maintain a separate account. And in that account, employer will do contributions he will prepare for the future, right? Okay. And in this plan asset means the you may invest in a stock exchange. These, these funds may be invested in a stock exchange, fixed income, different, different types of investment scenarios are there for this plan asset. Okay. So two things, two accounting we have to done, we have to do. And that is the first thing is obligation account. The first thing is obligation account. And the second thing is plan asset account obligation account and plan asset account obligation account and plan asset account right okay so now listen very carefully you know but this accounting is full of judgment this accounting just making your mind 
this accounting is full of judgment why just think i promised my employee that we will give you pension as a 50% of your final salary just read this word 50% of your final salary 50% of your final salary so first of all nobody knows after 20 30 years what will be the final salary so this calculation requires a lot of judgments lot of judgments keep in your mind first thing second one more thing second thing is i have told employee i have told employee that you will get the pension your pension will start from the date of retirement the date the day you will retire you will start getting the pension till your death till your death so one more issue who knows the date of death who knows the date of death so one more one more date of death is very very what i say it's very technical issue so yes this accounting requires a lot of judgments and there is a word there is a word actuary you might have heard you can search on google actuary or you may know about it so there is there, there are people who studies actuarial sciences so normally company hires services of actuary for this working okay and you know this is a very technical con concept if you read uh, international news so there are people who calculate the actuarial life of people like Warren Buffet. People like last time I was reading that only few hundred days of Warren Buffet actuarial life is left. People have calculated, right? So again, this is the area of judgment, right? Now, the whole calculation is done through projected unit method. Projected unit method, I'll explain you. It's not difficult. Don't take tension. It means employee will earn pension every year. Now, wait, 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 wait. First, I already told you we'll, we are going to maintain two accounts. One is obligation account, which is called defined benefit obligation, DBO. And the second one is plan asset account, plan asset account. Okay, right. Now, how are we going to start it? Listen, just think that individual just joined today individual we have no more previous employees we just hired individual today right so this is the first year so employee was just sitting he was not working hard listen to me so i came to came to employee and i said listen i said that if you work hard today if you work hard today after 20 years you will get this much amount. You will get this much amount. And I showed him dollars that in future you will get dollars. So as I showed him dollars, he started working hard. He started working hard. So when he started working hard, that means I'm getting services now. I'm getting the benefit now from the employee, but I'll pay him in future. I am getting services now and I will provide him benefits in future. So I need to book expense now. According to matching principle, I need to book expense now. So I will debit PNL. I will debit PNL, right? To the uh, equal to the amount of services, amount of services which I took this year, or the amount of pension that employee earned this year. But listen, this amount he will get not now in future. That's why I'll credit the liability. I'll credit the liability. So now, this entry is called current service cost. This is called current service cost. And my dear student, just think over it. Every year we need to make this entry because employee, listen my words, employee will get the pension for 20 years work, not one year. That means every year, gradually, gradually, every year, this employee will earn some pension. And this is what we call projected unit method or unit projected method, projected unit method. Projected unit method means employee will earn pension every year by working hard, slowly, slowly, gradually, gradually. So we need to book an expense every year. And this is what we call current service cost. That means he earns pension by working hard every day, every year. So every year we need to book this amount. Now, one thing, one thing, don't take, don't be panicked. In our examination, in our financial reporting examination, this current service cost will be given ready-made. The amount 
of current service cost will be given ready made in the exam they will give you ready made but in real life in real life i'm talking about the practical world in which we are living in real life this is calculated with very complexity you know whatever pension he will get will is the final sell it's is the 50 percent of final salary let us say 50 percent of final salary so first of all we'll calculate the 50 years 50 percent of final salary we will estimate the 50 percent of final salary this will be your one month pension this will be your one month pension then we'll calculate after retirement how many years he will live after retirement how many years he will live so let us say he will live 10 years let us say he will live 10 years so 10 years means how many months 10 multiplied by 12 so it will be 120 months so 120 months he will live after retirement and we'll multiply it with uh, per year pen per month pension what is per month pension the per month pension is your 50 percent of final salary in this way you will be calculating the overall pension amount overall pension amount and then you divide it by the working working years working years so in this way you will get this per year amount this per year current service cost amount but i would say again don't take tension this amount will be given ready made to you so don't worry at all so my dear student this current service cost is the entries pnl debit and liability see liability credit means your dbo dbo will go up your dbo will go up okay so let me show you see this current service cost see this see this thing this current service cost see add i have written add don't take tension about the whole format i'll explain you everything this current service cost will be added in your dbo account okay and i have taken the example that this guy is working for the very first time in life and this is our first employee so just we open our liability account now one more thing a basic thing basic you are at advanced level now just think we are providing benefits after we have to pay the pension after 25 years for example we have to pay pension after 25 years or 20 years we have to pay pension here we have to pay pension here but they are doing services here so all liabilities all liabilities which are payable one year or after one year or after we need to take present value that means we need to do discounting we need to do discounting so yes yes there is an element of interest is also there or we call it unwinding of discount so we need to do we need to calculate present value this whole working is done on present value and for present value for the calculation of present value we need an interest rate we need an interest rate or we call it discount rate see this thing came in exam i have written here clearly see this is the theory which interest rate see the screen my respected students see the screen which interest rate to be used which interest rate to be used for discounting high quality is first of all standard as written high quality corporate bonds interest rate high quality corporate bonds interest rate of that country right if next point if high quality corporate bonds are not available high quality corporate bonds rate are not available then use interest rate of government bonds then use interest rate of government bonds okay right you getting the point so if somebody asks you which interest rate to be used for discounting simple simple answer simple high quality corporate bonds interest rate to be used okay with same maturity like your pension going to mature in 20 years so you need to pick the bond of 20 years right now if high quality corporate bonds rate are not available then go for government bonds then go for government bonds that's it that's it now one thing which i didn't tell you and that is very important i have seen my in many past papers initially i told you my respected student initially i told you that listen to me that in defined benefit plan the risk is of employer in defined benefit plan yes the risk is of employer that's why we are reporting such a big risk so when the risk is of employer because employer has signed the agreement has signed the agreement so sign means legal legal obligation 
but you know in real life in i in real life and even is has said openly that this whole accounting this whole defined benefit defined benefit plan accounting is just not done for legal obligation but it's also done for com for constructive obligation constructive is 37 remember if there is a constructive obligation still you have to do the same accounting which i am teaching you right now and you know what is constructive obligation in constructive obligation means you have created although you have not signed anything legally but you have created valid expectation in the in the heart of employees that you are going to give this this much benefits okay and there was a past paper i saw it came like 15 20 12 years back or 15 years back in that past paper it was written listen to me very carefully in that past paper it was written that company didn't sign any legal agreement with the employee but yes it is the practice it is the practice of the company that whoever employees retires company gives them this much benefit and company did this thing many times many many times repeatedly so now it is in in the heart of employees they there is a valid expectation that they will also get it so in that case in that case you have to book same liability and everything okay right so please read these lines Okay, one more thing I would like to tell that I've just told you that in defined benefit plan, the risk is of employer risk. So there are many risk, investment risk. One, one of the risk is investment risk. Now, employer has promised employee, employer has promised employee that I, I'm responsible for final benefits. So now, now employer will do preparation Employer will invest in plan asset and plan asset means plan asset is ultimately invested in stocks and different areas. So if the stock market goes down and if there is any deficiency in the end, so now employer has to pay the difference from his own pocket. So there is an investment risk. There is an investment risk. There is one more risk which we call actuarial risk. Actuarial risk means whatever we are thinking and whatever is going to happen actually, the difference is actuarial risk. We are expecting that we'll, we'll be at $2 million, but in the end, if our actual liability is $3 million, so we have to pay the difference, okay? So actuarial risk is also with the employer, right? So these are the names of your risk. So now, my dear students, my dear student, look at this and think, think, think rationally. First of all, initially, I told you, initially, I told you that this is the first year of pension. So we made entry of current service costs, PNL debit and DBO liability credit. So liability is there in our accounts. Now, this year closing liability will be the next year. This year's closing liability will be the opening liability for next year. See, this is your opening liability for next year. Okay. Now, the show begins now. Next year. It's next year. Now, just think, just think that we can, we have to pay this liability after 20 years. We have to pay this liability after 20 years. So, we have calculated through discounting. We have calculated this liability through discounting this we have calculated this liability through discounting so whenever we do discounting we have to do unwinding you remember this hope you remember this whenever we are doing discounting we have to do unwinding of discount unwinding of discount and unwinding of discount the entry is hope you remember see 
the entry is interest expense debit and liability. Liability means DBO, defined benefit obligation credit. So interest debit interest expense and credit DBO. So your liability will go up. Your liability will go up automatically. So see this because of interest expense, your liability will go up. Hope you remember through your basics that you know the you know the meaning of unwinding of discount. This is a very basic thing, please. Next thing is current service cost. Next thing is current service cost. What is current? Why current service cost? It's because it's every year. I told you we are following projected unit method. Projected unit method means, listen, employee will work hard every year and employee will earn some pension. Okay. So obviously, just like in the first year, in the second year, employee will also work hard. So when employee is earning pension in the second year, yes, he will receive after 20 years. But yes, the services are given now. So definitely we'll have to make the entry of PL debit and DBO credit. This is the definition pension earned by employee in the current period. So obviously in every year, just keep it, this thing in your mind. In every year, we have to book current service costs. So current service costs, the entry is PNL debit, liability credit, liability credit, DBO credit. So it increases your liability. That's why see I've written add. Okay. Now, what a very interesting thing. The next thing is past service cost. There is a word past service cost. It's a very good topic. Let me explain you with theory everything. See, past service cost means basically amendment in plan. Past service cost means amendment in plan of our employees. Listen, what does it mean? For example, I hired my employees in the days of recession. You know, the recession is the time when nobody has job. So employees negotiation power is low in the time of recession. We all know. So I hired employee at very low rate with very low pensions agreement. Okay. But after two, three years, the session got over and now it's the time of boom. So when now it's the time of boom, so employees are seeing everywhere, everywhere the salaries are high and the pension packages are also high. So my employee will compare his pension package with the other employees pension package of other country, other companies. So definitely my employee will be demotivated, although he can't do anything because of the legal agreement, but he will be demotivated. But as an employer, I can see my workforce is not happy. As an employer, now I can see my workforce is not happy. So definitely I have to motivate them because a happy workforce is very important for the organization. So one day what happened, I called them in the hall, in my hall, big room. And I announced, I announced, listen my words. I said, those who have been with us, those who have been working with us for last three years, now they, they won't be getting 30% of their final salary as a pension. They will be getting 50%. See, I have changed the plan. I have amend the plan. This is called amendment in plan. Okay. And what we, what, why we call it past service cost? Because listen, we are going to give them additional benefit for their past services as well for their past for overall. I have said, now you will get 50% of the, instead of 30%, of the final salary now you will get 50 percent of the final salary for all the services so this is amendment in plan amendment in plan so just think just keep just think rationally that these words which i have just said to my employees that now you will you won't be receiving 30 percent of your final salary you will be receiving extra 50 percent of your final salary so these words will increase my obligation these words will increase my obligation see the whole story so when these words increase my obligation so i'll be making the entry sorry i'll be making the entry
debit pnl and credit dbo debit pnl and credit dbo debit pnl and credit dbo right expense debit and liability credit because yes it's an it's an it's a cost to me now i'll have to pay extra so past service cost let me give you a simple identification of past service cost past the simple identification of past service cost is the simple identification of past service cost is amendment in plan amendment in plan okay so the entry is pnl debit and dbo credit so once again when the entry is just look at the screen when the entry is debit PNL and credit DBO credit liability, so definitely it's increasing your liability, so it's it will be added. But be careful, be careful and apply breaks. Sometimes, not every time, sometimes this past service cost is is an is like a negative number. This past service cost is like a negative number and it is deducted, and we call it negative past service cost. What is negative past service cost? Listen to listen my watch my video. Normally the plan is amended upward. Normally the plan is amended upward like we promise them to pay more. Like we promise them to pay more. We promise them to pay more. But sometimes the plan is amended in opposite direction. Like we, we change amend them to pay less. So in that case, the entry will be this DBO debit and PNL credit. Then it will be your income. And then in that case, your liability will be de decreased. And this is what we call negative past service cost. Okay. So be careful. Maybe in the next class, I'll be teaching one question like this as well. Now one easy thing, easy, 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 which is, which we call benefits paid, benefits paid. Listen, obviously just think it's a running business. Now you make your mind, it's like a running business. So we have many employees and our employees are working for last 30, 40 years. So there is a possibility. There is a possibility. Now some employees will get re retirement. They will touch the age of retirement. So they will leave. And once they will leave, then we have to pay them benefits then we have to pay them benefits. So normally when we pay the benefits, our liability will go down. When the benefits are paid, the liability will go down. But we don't, we never pay the benefits from our own pocket. Listen, listen, listen. We never pay the benefits from our own pocket. We have a separate plan asset account. We have already done preparation. We have already done preparation C. We have already done preparation. Can you see the plan asset account? So. What entry we make from for benefits paid? We make the entry. DBO debit. And plan. Asset credit. DBO debit and plan asset credit. Very simple meaning at one end, obviously, when you will be paying benefits to employee, your liability will go down. And yes, you will be paying these benefits from your plan asset because you have maintained a plan asset account. So at one end, it, your DBO will go down and the, on the other hand, your plan asset will go down. See, it is deducted from here. Let me see. I have enlarged. It is deducted from DBO as well as it will be deducted from plan asset account. Don't worry. I'll explain you the plan asset account in detail don't worry at one end it will be deducted it will be deducted from dbo and on the other hand it will be deducted from plan asset now just giving you just telling you one thing for future for future you know can you see this entry dbo debit plan asset there is no cash written there is no cash written so this is not a cash flow for company this is not a cash flow for company this is not a cash flow for company. Can you see this? 
So yes, in the statement of cash flow, there will be a topic and you have done your this topic in your life and past. In the statement of cash flow, this these benefits paid are not treated as a cash flow for, for this company. Now we are very near to the success. Finally, see, we have done this one, two, three, four, and five. Five things I have told you. Now there is one special line. This I call it a special line. There is one special line, re-measurement component. Re-measurement component. This is I sometimes call a special line. And this is normally in 99.9% .9 question, this will be a balancing figure. This will be a balancing figure. Normally, this will be a balancing figure. Now I am going to show you how it is a balancing number. Listen. At the year end, yet the actuary. At the year end, the actuary gives you the closing balance. At the year end, the actuary gives you this closing balance. And you know, when actuary gives you this closing balance, Actuary uses different assumptions. Actuary uses different assumptions to calculate this closing balance. I have already told you in the beginning of this topic that this, this chapter is full of judgment. So when actuary calculate this closing liability, this closing liability is full of assumptions and judgments. Now wait, wait, wait. Assumptions and judgment includes the death day. We have to calculate the death day of employee we have to calculate the final salary after 20, 25 years of the employee. So just think it's full of assumptions and those assumptions are constantly changing. Those assumptions are constantly changing. So normally those assumptions are called actuarial assumptions. See the screen, please. Those assumptions are called, those assumptions are called Actuarial assumptions, those assumptions are called actuarial assumptions. Those assumptions are called actuarial assumptions. There are two types of actuarial assumptions. Number one is demographic rate, demographic assumptions, and second is financial. Demographic assumptions are mortality rate, age, qualification, and all these. Obviously, mortality rate means at what age you will die, at what age you will die, right? So we have to calculate the date of death. That is a very technical thing. So yes, they do your checkup. And you know, the date of death depends on the average age of that country as well. If you go to Pakistan, India, in these developing countries, the average age is normally 60, 65, like something. But if you go to California, the average age is like 80 years. So, and, they, and I've seen in U.S., that these people are very different. They live very happy life. So, and they live very energetic life. Obviously, they are full of resources as well. So normally their age and their health is different from us. That's a reality. That's a reality. So, actuary uses different assumptions. Actuary checks that whether you are suffering from any life-threatening diseases or not. If you have cancer, so obviously you, you will survive only a few years. So in this way, obviously that's not part, that's depth is not part of our course, but I'm just giving you idea. So actuarial assumptions include demographic and financial. Financial assumptions is inflation rate. Just think, I have promised employee to give him salary after 25 years as 50, give him pension as 50% of the final salary. 50% of the final salary. So how to calculate final salary? How to calculate salary after 25 years? So that means we have to assume an inflation rate. So that inflation rate changes with respect to time. If you have seen in last few years after Russia-Ukraine war, there was, there was very high inflation in the world. Unexpected inflation in the world everywhere like UK, US. Prices are almost double now. We experience it normally. So... These two assumptions are called actuarial assumptions and they keep changing, changing every year. So now just think, last year the actuarial assumptions were dis was different and this year 
the actuarial assumption is different. Like I give you one example. Last year, the employee was just a BCom qualified. Employee was just a BCom qualified bachelor's. But now he, at the end of this year, he is completely chartered accountant. He's a complete chartered accountant. He entered in chartered accountancy and he did more courses like data analytics or other, other courses. So now it means now when he's a chartered accountant, so his growth will be different. His growth will be different and his final salary will be different. So this is one of the example that actuarial assumptions changes with time. And when actuarial assumption changes, listen to me. Now it's a final shot then this liability will change. This closing liability will move up or down, up or down. And when this closing liability will move up or down, so there will be a balancing number will come here. There will be a balancing number will come here. Balancing number will come here. And this balancing number is called remeasurement component. Sometimes this balancing number is bad and sometimes it's good. So the old name, like 15, 20 years back, the old name for this number was actuarial loss or gain. The old name for this number was actuarial loss or gain. Or actuarial loss or actuarial gain. Okay. But now, after the amendment in IS-19, they have changed the name remeasurement component. So listen, if the number is positive, if the number is positive, then this is a loss. If the number is positive, then this is a loss. Why this is a loss? Because this, this is whole a liability. This whole is the liability account. We are working on liability account. And if liability is going up, it's bad for you. If liability is going up, it's bad for you. And my dear student, if the number is, if the number is negative, if this number is negative, then this will be again because if negative means liability is going down and if liability is going down it's it's very good it's again but now where now the question now the question arises where to post this remeasurement component in the financial statement the answer is oci this remeasurement component will always go in oci other comprehensive income remember the three lines with the income statement So this is the whole story of DBO. This is the whole story of DBO. Think over it, giving you 30 seconds to think over it. Yes, it's a new topic. It's not difficult. I'm telling you because I will, I'll be teaching you some questions now in today's class. You will do it. Now, the next account is plan asset. Obviously, we have given such a big words to employees, so we need to prepare it. And I'll explain you this preparation is mandatory in some cases. In some, For some countries, it is mandatory preparation. So you will open a plan asset account. You will open a plan asset account. Employer will open a plan asset account now. Normally, this plan asset account is totally separate from the company. So how to open the plan asset account? How employer will open a plan asset account? Very simple. Employer will put hand in his pocket and employer will contribute into the plan asset. 
employer will put some funds in the plan asset or you can you think over it in the stock market in simple terms in employer has it started investing in the plan asset or stock market so the first entry will be of the contribution paid is plan Okay, yes, one thing I would like to highlight, and this is fair thing, that this plan, this, this is what we call contribution paid. This is what we call contribution paid. Listen, this contribution paid is normally guided by the actuary. Actuary tells you that how much contributions you are required to make. Because yes, if if I'm a, if I'm a small company and I have only two, three employees, so I don't need to contribute more. But but if I'm a large corporation with hundreds and thousands of employees and big employees, so definitely I'll have to invest more in the plan asset, okay? So normally the actuary guides you how to do it. Now my respected students, see the entry plan asset, debit and cash credit. That means the asset has come in the world. The asset account has been created through the entry. Now, let us say this year we created the asset account. This year we created the asset account. So this plan asset will be the closing balance of this year and opening balance for next year. Opening balance for next year. See, now see the fair format. So first of all, first of all, we'll write plan, fair value of plan asset brought forward. Keep write one thing in your notebooks that plan asset, this is the instruction of IS-19. Plan asset is always recorded at fair value. Plan asset is always recorded at fair value. Plan asset is always recorded at fair value. Okay, now this is the opening balance. Now just think when we were making, when we were maintaining the liability account, we have to book interest expense because in li on liability, there is an interest expense unwinding of discount. Now on plan asset, definitely there will be interest income. You will be getting interest income. So the fixed rate should be used. Now it is the, it is the instruction of standard IS-19 that the rate you are using for the liability, the same rate you have to use for plan asset. The rate which you are using for the liability, same rate you have to use for interest income. So you will multiply the interest rate and you will book the interest income. What will be the entry of interest income? The entry will be the entry will be plan asset debit and interest income credit. Plan as let me show you. Let me complete this entry first. Okay, I've already taught you this, but let me write it again. So the entry for interest income, you can write it plan, asset, debit, and interest income credit. Now, every year, obviously, where employees are earning pension every year, they are new employees are joining. So every year you have to prepare. Every year you have to prepare. That means actuary will guide you every year how much to contribute. So every year you have to do contributions paid. Every year employer has to do, this is a cash flow. And every year employer has to put some amount in the plan asset. So what is the entry of contributions paid? Uh, let me show you, see the entry. Plan, asset, debit, and cash credit. Debit, plan, asset, and credit cash. So it automatically your plan asset will go up. Now, one thing that will reduce your plan asset is benefits paid. Obviously, with respect to time, listen, listen, why we are maintaining this plan asset for employees? Obviously, we are maintaining this plan asset for the future of employee. So now as the employment will, employees will get retirement, as the employees will get retirement, we'll start paying them. We'll start paying them. So automatically, we will reduce the benefits paid. Automatically, we'll reduce the benefits paid from this plan asset. Now the last thing, last thing, easy thing. Finally, see it is written, plan asset is recorded at fair value. Plan asset is recorded at fair value. So you have to apply, 
you have to write fair value of plan asset at the end. So now there is an issue. It's fair value. Fair value means market value. So the market value may go up and down. Fair value or market value may go up and down. So if this market value may go up and down, so there is a, once again, there will be some balancing figure. Once again, there will be some balancing figure. And these balancing figures are again called re-measurement component. These balancing figures are again called re-measurement component. But yes, now this is an asset account. This is an asset account. So if the balancing figure is a positive number, if the balancing figure is a positive number, if the balancing figure is a positive number, then it's a good news. That means an asset is increasing, which is a good news, then it's a gain. And if it is a negative number here, then it's a loss. Then it's a loss. Okay. One extra logic I would like to give, but don't take, don't be panicked. It's not for everybody. Everybody cannot understand. Even 99% people don't know. Okay. Just I'm giving these logic for few students, those who can understand. Otherwise, normal things are good. You know, in this plan asset, why this remeasurement component is coming? Why this remeasurement component is coming? Let me tell you the exact logic. For example, your interest income is 10%. The interest rate is 10%. So it International accounting standard has allowed you to book fixed interest, fixed amount of interest income, and put this thing in PL. This thing is allowed in PL, okay? So you have to book the same interest rate as you are using for DBO, right? To because of to maintain the equality. To maintain the equality. Now, but at the year end, at the year end, there is a possibility that a stock market goes up by 15% stock market goes up by 15%. That means you have, you got the gain of 15%. You got the gains, your, your values went up by 15%, but you booked only 10%. You booked interest income of only 10%. So now there will be a 5% gain here. There will be a 5% gain here automatically. So if your investment moves up or down, then the extra amount will be adjusted in Remeasurement component, or we call it actuarial loss or gain, and these extra things goes in OCI. Remeasurement component goes in OCI. Okay, right. This is the logic. Still, if you don't want to, still ninety nine percent people don't know the logic as well. So they still they 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 solve the questions. No issue. Please check it out. Once again, check it out. Once again, check it out, please. Read this whole whole two paragraphs it needs your energy okay Now, just for you guys, out of these two formats, out of these two formats, tell me what amount will go in PNL. What amount will go in PNL? Listen to me. These are the notes. Your interest expense will go in PNL. Yes. Interest income will go in PNL. 
your current service cost and past service cost, which we call um, uh, past service cost is basically amendment and plan. And there is one more word gain on gain or loss on curtailment and settlement. These two words are new. We, we, we will discuss this in next meeting. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just write, listen the name. So these things are basically goes in profit and loss account. These things are goes basically in profit and loss account. Okay. And in the SOFP, in the SOFP, you have to book the net liability. In the SOFP, you have to book in the net liability. Net liability means the difference between this and this. The difference between these two will go in SOFP. If the liability is higher than asset, then, de then definitely you'll book the net non-current liability. Non-current. Why non-current? Because you have to pay this liability after 20 years, more than 12 months. You have to pay this liability after more than 12, after 12 months. So it's a non-current liability. It's a non-current liability. Okay, now few more things. Yes, I told you I will be discussing some something about the plan asset as well. There are two types of plan asset. One is funded schemes and other one is unfunded scheme. Funded schemes and unfunded schemes. What is funded schemes? What is funded schemes? Means Ring fence means plan asset separate from company. First, tell me. First, listen. You know, in past, this happened many times. I'm talking about very extreme past. That employer, employer was maintaining amounts for the employee's future. So definitely pension is the future of employee. But you know, <clears throat> the employer and the senior management, they were involved in high risk things, high risk gambling things and all. So they lost all the money of company and the company went bankrupt. The company went into bankruptcy and you know, everything goes zero, uh, including the employees, employees pension thing. So that was, that was a very sad thing that employees worked hard the whole life for the future. And in the end, they didn't get anything because of the management attitude, because of the management doing gambling and all these risky things. So now many governments, many after these events, after these scandals, many governments made the, this law, this law mandatory that now employer has to maintain a separate, have has to maintain separate plan asset account outside the company. Like it's ring fence, see the word. It's ring fence. Ring fence means it is covered with a protection of law. It is covered with the protection. There are just assume there are guards standing outside this account. So when it is a funded account, now company cannot use this account, this plan asset for its own benefits. Never, never, never. Company can only, this account is only for the benefits of employee. Even if company goes bankrupt or even if the company is liquidated, even if the company is liquidated, still the creators can't touch this account, can't touch because this account is only for the benefit of employee. Okay. And normally sometime we call it qualifying. There is a, there is a name. Sometime it is in the form of qualifying insurance policy. In some books, you will read this name. In some books, you will find this name. So please read it. Let me enlarge it. See, start reading it. Read it. Now, 
the second one is unfunded second one is unfunded unfunded means no ring fence no separate plan asset maintained let me give you example sometimes sometimes we call it that yes we have bought this property and we'll pay from this property and yes we are using this property for our own uh, objectives as well so now it's not it's no more it's no more ring fenced okay and yes this no more ring fence is risky for employee you tell me one thing which one is safe for employee funded is safe funded is safe okay now i have written one example of unfunded is a state bank state bank means central bank in pakistan pakistan central bank is called state bank so normally central bank has the power of printing money central bank has power of printing money so they don't have to keep anything they can print money and they can pay okay that's why they can maintain unfunded right but normally i have read this in icaw book that in uk us and in many countries for private organizations the government normally recommend the funded one and for government public sector they can do unfunded right because at the back of the public sector government is there government is there to pay right now one thing what i was teaching right now what we studied right now the two plan the dbo and the plan asset that was funded one that means if if it is written that if the scheme is funded the plan asset is funded then you have to maintain that plan asset working which i taught you which i taught you okay Now we will be doing our first question of today's class. Easy question. It's not difficult. Okay. So this is our first question. And we have to do this question in, in a very organized way, right? It contains two years now. The following information in relation to a defined benefit plan operated by Celine. All transactions, very important information, all transactions are assumed, all transactions are assumed to occur at the reporting date of the relevant year. I'll explain you this thing. This is this is a liability on me. This is a very important line. The reporting date means at the year end. All transactions, all events are occurring at the year end, it means. At 1st January export the present value, the present value of defined first listen the accounting period. Read these lines. See, we have to work for two accounting periods. We need to work for two accounting periods. So the first accounting period is 1st January export to 31st December export. This is our first accounting period. And second accounting period is definitely 1st January X5 to 31st December X5. Now, just look at this 2004. 2005 is the second year. We're not doing right now. We'll do it later. Okay. So, read the first line. On 1st January X4, the present value of obligation. So, come here. Opening obligation is 140. See, you have to make three columns. Now, listen. You need to make three columns whenever you need to solve such questions. The first column is DBO. DBO means liability column, defined benefit obligation. The second column is plan asset column. And the third column is net column. Net means the difference between these two. Okay. So if you have just seen the question, the DBO liability, opening liability is 140. Opening plan asset is 80. Now you have to apply simple maths, no technical maths. Just first column minus set. How to calculate the net column? How to calculate the net column is the first column minus second. 140 minus 80 will give you 60. That's it. Very simple. First column minus second. That's it. Now, now there is an interest rate of 4%. There is an interest rate you can see of 4%. Okay. So obviously, on the liability, we need to calculate interest expense. And on the asset, we need to calculate interest income. So 140 multiplied by 140 is the opening balance. 140 is the opening balance. So 140 multiplied by 4%. 140 multiplied by 4% is I think 5.6. Still, let me check. 
Okay. And 80 multiplied by 4% is 3.2. So here you have interest expense. On the other hand, you have interest income. It's better wait. Let you should you should keep the picture of these formats. If you have, if you want to take the picture of these format, this is very important. Just you need to follow this format and you will you will do your question very simple. Okay. So now 5.6 and what I told you how to calculate the net column. Net column means first column minus second column. Simple maths like DBO minus plan asset. So 5.6 minus 3.2. 5.6 minus 3.2 is 2.4. One more shortcut I can tell you, if you directly ap apply 4% on 60, if you directly apply 4% on 60, you will get 2.4. Very simple, very simple. Okay, now one more thing. Now I would like to tell you that as a student, you may ask the question, sir, why did you apply this 4% on the opening balance? Why did you apply 4% on the opening balance? Because, listen the answer, this opening balance will be, constant throughout the year this opening balance will be constant throughout the year why because of this line now i'm telling you see all all transactions are assumed to occur at the reporting date of the relevant year that means all contribution paid current service costs past service costs benefits paid these are the things which changes your assets and liabilities benefits paid contribution paid these are the things which changes your liability and asset so it, the assumption is written that all these transactions are assumed to occur at the end of the year. Reporting date means end of the year. So when these all are occurring at the end of the year, so that means the opening balance is constant throughout the year. Opening balance is constant throughout the year. That's why we have applied interest percentage on opening balance. This is the logic. Okay. Now, my dear student, next line. Current service and past service cause they have given you total because the treatment is same. Because of current service costs, we increase your, you increase your DBO. So you will write here. In shortcut, we write current service costs as CSC, CSC. And no need to write the past service cost. I'm just writing current service cost. So it's 30, right? Now, then the next thing is benefits paid, benefits paid, benefits paid from one end. It will be deducted from DBO on the other end. It will be deducted from plan asset. Okay. So it's going to be 20, see 20 and 20. Okay. Now next one is contribution paid, contribution into the plan, contribution into the plan, contribution into the plan. That means contribution paid by employer. You all know, just showed you the format as well. It increases your plan asset. So you will be increasing your plan asset by you will be increasing your plan asset by 25, okay? Then next thing is finally the closing balance. See, this is 31st December. So the closing liability is 200 and closing, closing fair value of plan asset is 120. So here I'm going to write 200. Here I'm going to write 120. 200 minus 120 is 80, okay? Now wait, 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 wait. Let me make the net column and I know this thing that re-measurement component is left. I will calculate in front of you. So how did, what I taught you that how to calculate the net column, simple, simple DBO less plan asset, DBO less plan asset, DBO. So 30 minus nothing is written here. 30 minus zero is positive 30. Now, now here, listen here, listen, listen, listen. Here, nothing is written. That means zero. So zero minus 25 is negative 25. Zero minus 25 is negative 25. Okay. And here minus 20 benefits paid is already minus 20. Then there is a minus sign here. Minus sign here. So minus minus is plus. So minus 20 plus 20 is net. Net effect is nil. Net effect is nil here. Okay. Now, finally, I have to calculate. Let me change the color as well. I have to calculate these balancing numbers. Let's do it. Let's do it together. So 140, 140 plus 5.6, sorry. So 
So I am getting a positive number of 44.4. So obviously it's a loss. A positive balancing number coming here means it's a loss. It's a loss. Because positive balancing number in liability account means liability is increasing. And increment of liability is bad for us. Okay. Now come to the second account. 80 plus 3.2. Again, a positive number is coming, but yes, in the asset account, positive number means gain. In the asset account, positive number means gain, okay? So now, just use your this, this brain. At one end, you have a loss. On the other end, you have a gain. If you cancel it, definitely the loss is greater than gain. So there will be a net loss. There will be a net loss. Wait, wait, wait. Just follow the same pattern. First column minus second column. So 44.8 minus 31.8. 44.4 minus 31.8. It's 12.6. And yes, this is your final loss. Remeasurement loss. Okay. So in this way, you just completed these three columns. Don't crush. Go relax. Okay, now our very interesting thing. In the end, whenever you end such a practice, this is a practical question. This is a practical, I agree. This is a practical question. Whenever you end the practical question, you can, you can, you can verify. You can verify whether you are right or wrong. Whether you are doing right or wrong. Listen, listen. So there is a double entry you can make. There is a double entry you can make using the net column, using the net column only. Okay, now wait. Now tell me what, which things will go in the PNL. See. Which things will go in the PNL? This interest income and interest expense. Obviously, this is the net interest expense. This is the net interest expense of 2.4 because at one end there is an interest expense, on the other end there is an interest income. So 2.4 is your net interest expense. Then 30 is your current service cost. So these two numbers, these two numbers will go in PNL. And yes, these two are expenses. Expenses. So 30 plus 2.4 is 32.4. Look at here. So I'll be making entry debit PNL 32.4. Debit PNL 32.4. Wait. Okay. Now this is called remeasurement loss. This 12.46 is remeasurement loss, not gain. And I already told you that remeasurement loss or gain means remeasurement component goes in OCI. OCI. So it's a loss. It's a loss. So we'll debit the OCI. We'll debit the OCI, okay? If it would be a gain, then definitely we'll credit the OCI. We'll credit the reserve. OCI is a sort of reserve, you can call it, okay? Now, next thing. Next thing, listen. Listen to me. Employer paid some cash. This 25 is the cash payment. Contribution paid is 25. So, employee gave away some cash. So, when you pay cash, you have to credit. You have to credit cash by 25. Now, can you see this double entry is not balanced? This double entry is not balanced and I'm going to do some magic now. I'm going to do some magic. Listen, 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 listen. Can you tell me what is the net opening liability? Net, see positive number means net opening liability is 60. And what is the net closing liability? It's 80. Your net opening liability is 60 and your net closing liability is 80. So from 60 to 80, from 60 to 80, how much net liability is going up 20? The movement, the upward, upward movement in the net liability during the year is 20. So when liability goes up, you credit it. When liability goes up, you credit it. And whenever you credit it, now look at, now see the entries balance. See the entries exactly balance. And this is the verification that you have done correct. This is the verification that you have done correct. So this thing will go in the PNL. 
you can uh, tell examiner this thing will go in the PNL, this thing will go in the OCI. And yes, one more thing they may ask, and they ask normally, and that is SOFB extract 31st of December X4. It's X, yes, X4. So now wait. In the SOFP, you have to report net pension liability in long-term liabilities. Net pension liability. Listen, can you see at the year end 200, see the year end. Year end 200 is your liability and 120 is your plan asset. So 200 minus 120 net pension liability is 80. That's it. This is what we'll, we'll be reporting in the SOFB, okay? So your your first year is done. Your first year is done. First year is done. First year is done. Now let's do the second year, simple second year. Normally students, I would request you to pause the screen, to pause the screen, first try the 2005 yourself, complete thing, everything with double entry. First try 2005 and then watch my solution. Now, let me make the three columns for you. It's DBO, plan asset, and net, okay? So whatever is the closing balance for that last year is will be the opening balance now. So see, the closing balance of previous year is 200, 120, and net is 80. Net amount is 80. Now, check what is the interest rate now. Interest rate now is... Yes, 3%. Interest rate is 3%. So how are we going to do it? First of all, this is going to be interest. 200 times 3% is 6. 120 times 3% is, I think, 3.6. So 6 minus 3.6 is 2.4. Okay. Now, the next thing is current service cost and past service cost. Let's check it now. The current service cost and past service cost is 32 now. 32. So, yes, the current service cost increases your defined benefit obligation. Hope you remember the format. Then, contribution. Then, the next thing is benefits paid. Okay, let's write the benefits paid first. Benefits paid. I think it's 22 this time. So benefits paid not only reduces your DBO, but also your plan asset. Okay. It's 22. Then you have contribution paid. It's 30 this time. 30, 30. And yes, contribution paid increases your plan asset. Only plan asset. It's 30, okay? Now, finally, we need to write the closing balances. And finally, we need to calculate remeasurement component. So what are the closing balances now? It's 230 and 140. See the screen, 230 and 140.
Okay. So now 230 minus 140 is I think 90. Okay. Now wait, let me make the net column again. So net, how we make net column? DBO less plan asset. So 32 minus nothing is written is zero is 32. Minus this will be canceled. And in contribution contribution paid column, the in the first column, nothing is written. It means zero. So zero minus 30 will give you negative 30. Okay. Now let me write here. Remeasurement component. Let me write here remeasurement component. Okay. Listen. Listen. Let's calculate. You guys have time. You can do it yourself. It's 200 and two. Yes. Again, a positive number is coming. Positive number is there. It's 14 positive means loss. Okay. Now let's check, check here. Listen. 120, 153.6 minus 22. Okay. Positive number is coming. It's 8.4. This is your gain. Positive number here in asset account is a gain. So when you have loss, 14 loss and 8.4 gain. 14 loss and 8.4 is gain. So 14. So loss is more and gain and less. Gain is less. So finally you have a 5.6. Yes, it's a loss. And it will go in OCI. Okay. So my dear students, I have again made I have again made it for you. I hope you also did correct. You also did it correct. Okay, let's make the double entry again. Let's make the double entry again. Okay. So tell me which what amount will go in the PNL. The amount which will go in PNL is these two. 32 and 2.4. 32 and 2.4 is going to be 34.4. These are your expenses. So debit PNL 34.4 expenses goes on the debit side. Okay. Then how much loss will go in OCI? This is loss. That's why OCI will be debited 5.6. Now, see, employer has paid contribution. So contribution paid is a cash in the form of cash. So cash will be credited by 30. And now finally, the magic moments, magical moments. So you have, you have, Opening net liability as 80 and closing let net liability is 90. Opening net liability is 80 and closing net liability is 90. So the liability is going up by 10, up 80 to 90. Liability is going up. And when liability going up, you credit it. So can you check? Yes, the entry is balanced. So it's perfect. The entry is balanced. So it's perfect, right? It's for 2005. And now what amount will go in PNL? It's 34.4. What, what amount will go in OCI? It's 5.6. And finally, in SOFP, we all know we will report year end net non current liability. So 230 minus 140, 90. This amount will go in. This amount will go in SOFP at the year end. Okay. Right.
okay so that's it for today's class and uh, this lecture i'm also posting on youtube as well so those who are watching it on youtube they can contact me for the full course we have definitely the full course as well so thank you for listening take care bye bye